Hi everyone, welcome back. So I was watching one of Emily's makeup bags videos the other day, which was all about ranking the different makeup categories within your collection. And I thought that idea was really good, really interesting, because there's a lot of ranking videos on YouTube. So videos where you rank your favorite lipsticks or your, your top five favorite bronzers or your worst blushes. There's a lot of those types of videos out here on YouTube, but I haven't really seen any videos that rank entire categories. So I thought that idea from Emily was really really interesting so that is what I am basing today's video on I'm taking inspiration from Emily so thank you very much for that video I will link hers in the description box so please go and check hers out after this one so what I've done is I've gone through my makeup inventory and I've ordered all of the different makeup categories within my collection and I have the list here on my phone and I have 23 I didn't realize there were that many 23 different categories of makeup within my collection that I have tried to order so I've tried to rank them as best as I can I found it really easy to rank my least favorite and my most favorite but it was some of the categories in the middle that were a little bit difficult and the way that I have tried to rank them are my thoughts on the overall category rather than the products within the category that I own so it's whether I wear this category of makeup often or not, whether I enjoy doing it. So that is how I have tried to kind of rank these different types of categories within my collection. So I have 23 categories, so I'm aware that this video might be a little bit long, so I'm just gonna get straight into things and tell you what has come in at number 23. So at number 23 then, my least favourite makeup category within my collection is liquid eyeliner. Now I'm not a big eyeliner person, I, I've got some on today, this is a pencil, but usually on a day to day basis I don't really wear eyeliner. I'm not very good at it and I have different sized eyes, I can never remember which way around it is but one of the eyes is more hooded than the other. So I find if I wear eyeliner it really exaggerates that and liquid eyeliner in particular is my least favourite type of eyeliner to wear. You've got to be really good at liquid eyeliner so it's definitely not for beginners, you've got to be so precise and then because it's, well I was going to say difficult, because it's nigh and impossible to smudge out a liquid liner, if you go wrong, you have to get in there with makeup remover, remove it, you then end up removing your makeup underneath. So I just find it a bit of a faff. Now I have two liquid eyeliners within my collection, and to be totally honest with you, if I was to declutter them and not repurchase any, I wouldn't miss this makeup category. I just don't often wear a liquid eyeliner. I can't even remember the last time I wore them. I've got a black one and a brown one, and I just, I can't remember the last time I wore a liquid eyeliner. So that just goes to show that it's not a makeup category that I enjoy wearing. It's without a doubt the least favorite makeup category within my collection. Number 22 is very similar to number 23 and this is eyeliner pencils. That is what I have on today. I've got the Charlotte Tilbury mesmerized maroon, something like that. It's the double ended eyeliners that are for different eye colours, so I've gone for the one that's for green eyes, so it's like a purple eyeliner and then the other side is like a musky, dusky rose mauve type of colour. So ignoring today, I don't often wear eyeliner pencils as well. Eyeliner pencils is a category of makeup that I really have to force myself to wear, I really have to tell myself, put on an eyeliner. It's not a makeup item that I would naturally gravitate towards and I would naturally apply. I really have to force myself to wear it and I have I think two in my shop my stash and one in my project pan because I know if I don't include eyeliner pencils in any type of makeup challenge on my on my channel here on YouTube I just wouldn't wear them and again it's for similar reasons as I described for the liquid liner it's because of the different shaped eyes I'm not very good at eyeliner and I actually much prefer to use eyeshadow as eyeliner as well. I feel like it's so much easier and it's a lot softer as well. I don't like a lot of really harsh defined makeup on myself. I much prefer like a, a softer, more natural type of makeup. So I find that both liquid and eyeliner pencils are both too harsh. Even though I try to smudge out eyeliner pencils, and this is quite a tricky one to smudge out actually, this one is quite tough, quite stubborn, which is good because it stays there all day. Even when I try to smudge out an eyeliner pencil, it never looks like how it does in, you know, TikTok videos where it's all like really nicely diffused and natural. I, I just can't make eyeliner pencils work on myself. I'm not that good at makeup. 
to be able to get like a real nice smudged kind of lived in eyeliner look. Next one, number 21, is Glitter Eyeshadow Primer. Now, the glitter primer that I have is the NYX Glitter Base, NYX Glitter Primer. Can't remember the exact term, but it's the one from NYX. The product itself is excellent. It's really, really great at providing a real sticky, tacky base for shimmery eyeshadows. Now, I do have a bit of shimmer on today, so I probably should have put it on underneath this. And what it does, it just makes your shimmer, your glitter eyeshadows just way more intense. And the NYX product is excellent for this. So the product itself, I really, really like, but the category, I don't often wear. I don't often reach for this glitter primer. So today, like I said, I haven't worn it today because I feel like I can get by without it. It's not a necessity within my collection. If I didn't have any, I, I wouldn't really miss it. I can get away with using like a concealer for a tacky base or an eyeshadow primer for a tacky base as well. As long as you've got something quite sticky, I don't feel like the glitter primer is an essential makeup item to have. It definitely helps. It definitely makes your eyeshadow look way more intense, but you can get by without it. So next one then coming in at number 20 is highlighter. Now highlighter is a makeup item that I wear pretty much every time I wear makeup. But to be honest with you, I only do that because I want to use up all of my highlighters. I've said this before quite a few times on my channel, but I am not a massive highlighter fan. I have it on today, I've got Becca Champagne Pop on. Not too much, so I'm not really sure if you can see much of it. But I am not a big fan of having lots of shimmer, lots of kind of sparkle and highlight on my face. Like the, with the glitter primer, I wouldn't miss it. I wouldn't miss having any highlighters. And I actually think once the day comes around, it'll probably be years in the future, but once the day comes around that I no longer have any highlighters in my collection, I wouldn't buy any. It really is a makeup item that I wear because I want to kind of get it used up. And if I didn't include it in project pans or shop my stashes, it would probably also be another item that would just sort of sit in my collection and not get used. It's just a makeup item I don't enjoy using. And it's one that if I didn't have a channel here on YouTube, I wouldn't own any of. Number 19 is setting spray. And I've put this near the bottom of my list because it's a makeup item that I don't wear that often. I used to wear setting spray on a fairly regular basis, even if I was, you know, sat around the flat just working from home and I had makeup on, I would still apply setting spray. However, as I'm getting older, my face is becoming more dehydrated, my skin's becoming more dehydrated and wearing items like a setting spray just exacerbates that. So what I started doing now is only wearing setting spray if I'm going out for an evening or out for dinner or something and I really want my makeup to properly stay in place. The setting spray I have is the Urban Decay All Nighter, which is an excellent setting spray. I love that. It, it just does exactly what it says it does. It makes your makeup stay in place all day. So I think it is brilliant. But it's not a makeup item that I wear that often. I will always have one in my collection though because it is very handy, but it's just not something I reach for on a day-to-day -day basis anymore. Coming in at number 18 is primer. And I'm not really a massive primer fan. I don't feel like it does a lot in terms of making my makeup last all day or just providing a really good base for your makeup. I often find that if I moisturize well enough, if I wear, you know, SPF, then that provides a good enough base for makeup. And a primer, again, is something that I don't really reach for on a day-to-day -day basis when it comes to putting on my makeup. I'll do my skincare and then I'll just go straight in with my makeup. I won't wear a primer. So the category itself, I'm not really that fussed about. However, and this is where I'm slightly torn with how I've placed primer, the product itself that I own, the only primer that I own is the Bobbi Brown Face Base, which is absolutely incredible. Honestly, it's one of the best makeup items I have ever bought. It is so nourishing and hydrating. And I finally get what people mean when they say that you have to wear primer because when I wear this primer and then go in with my makeup, my makeup looks way better. It provides a real hydrated base for the makeup to blend over the top. So when my makeup looks better, it lasts all day. So this primer, I really, really love. So I was a little bit torn about whether to include primer a lot higher up the list because I like the product. However, I have tried a lot of primers and for the other primers that I've tried, I'm not that fussed about. So if we were ranking individual makeup items, 
I think this would be a lot higher up the list, but the category as a whole, primer as a whole, not my favourite. So we're starting to move into more eye-based makeup now. So for number 17, I've put eyeshadow singles. Now I have some MAC singles, one Kiko single, and some Makeup Geek singles. But because my eyeshadow singles aren't really that cohesive, I can't create a whole eyeshadow look from multiple eyeshadow singles within my collection. I can do a one shade and done type of look, but because I can't create a real cohesive look with multiple shadows from my eyeshadow singles, I don't often reach for them. I'm more likely to go for a palette. I'm very lazy when it comes to makeup. I like things to be real easy for me when, when I apply my makeup. I don't like to think a lot. I just like to grab a few products and I'm done. So if I look at my eyeshadow singles, I have to think, okay, which, which colors are gonna work with each other? Can I pair these with those? So I don't often wear them. I really love the colours that I have and I think some of them are really, really beautiful and really unique, which is what I wanted my eyeshadow singles to be. But yeah, because I can't really create a whole look with multiple singles, that's why I don't really reach for them. So I think it made sense for me to kind of include this towards the bottom of the list, but not quite right at the bottom. Number 16 is face and eye palettes. So when I was just saying about how I want makeup to be really easy for me, Face and eyeshadow palettes do this. I have four Laura Geller face and eye palettes that have four eyeshadows, a blusher and a highlighter, and they're all designed to work cohesively with each other. So I like that. I like that that is really easy. I don't have to think about it. I know that if I pick one of those palettes, all of the eyeshadows are gonna work together, and those eyeshadows are gonna work with the blusher and with the highlighter. However, saying that, I still don't really reach for them that often. And I think the reason why is because I am so lazy with makeup when I'm not filming, I don't often wear an eyeshadow. So I'll just go for base products, mascara and a lip product. And as well, because I'm not a massive highlighter fan, the only product within those palettes that I would use would be a blusher. Again, I really like the products. I really like all four of those eyeshadow and face palettes. I think they're all beautiful. And Laura Geller, the quality is amazing as well. But I reach for individual highlighters, individual blushes and eyeshadow palettes above the combined face and eye palettes. So I realise that what I'm saying is kind of contradictory because I did just say that I like makeup to be easy for me and the face and eye palettes have done this, but I'm still not reaching for them. Number 15 then is powder. I have two powders within my collection. I've got the Laura Mercier Loose Translucent Setting Powder and then the Fenty Invisimat Blotting Powder. So I have one for touch-ups on the go, the blotting powder, and then the Laura Mercier is for when I've done my whole face of makeup and I want to set it. Now, powder is a makeup item that I use every time that I wear makeup because I have I've got like oily dehydrated skin, so I've got combination skin. My cheeks are very dehydrated, but my T-zone is oily. So I just sort of powder my T-zone and under my eyes. So I do use powder every time I wear makeup. But to be completely honest, powder is really boring. I think this is the makeup item that I get the least excited about. So where eyeliners were right down the bottom of my list, I love the marketing behind eyeliners. I love looking at pictures of new eyeliners that are out there on the market. But powders, to be totally honest with you, couldn't care less. As long as it sets my makeup, I don't care about the brand, I don't care about the packaging. For me, it's more a case of I use that item because it's practical. I just can't get excited about powders. I use it to set my makeup and then I'm right on to the next makeup item. I just don't get the excitement around face powders. I know everybody's individual, everybody has their different preferences when it comes to makeup, but for me, I just find powders really boring. However, it's not on at the bottom of my list because it's a makeup item that I wear a lot and I do find that it works, but in terms of excitement levels that you're gonna get out of me when it comes to powder, we're kind of looking at nil. Number 14 is eyeshadow primer, and eyeshadow primer for me, as somebody who has oily eyelids, I will always have within my makeup collection. I don't really know how I used to do my makeup before without having an eyeshadow primer. It must have creased all the time. I just find eyeshadow primer so incredibly helpful. It just provides a real tacky base for my makeup to stick to, and I find that my eyeshadow will last all day. And unlike powder, 
I quite like trying different eyeshadow primers as well. My holy grail is the Urban Decay Primer Potion, but the NYX eyeshadow bases are very, very close second. That one is a great budget option. And eyeshadow primer really is an essential in my makeup collection. If I'm gonna wear eyeliner or eyeshadow, anything on my eyelids, I will wear an eyeshadow primer without fail. Number 13 is eyeshadow duos. And I suppose I have put this at number 13 because of the eyeshadow duo that I own rather than the category as a whole, I suppose. And the eyeshadow duo that I own is NARS Is Old and the, the colours are just so incredibly warm. They're like autumn in an eyeshadow duo. <laughs> and the colours are a burnt copper and just a real vibrant warm orange gold they are absolutely beautiful they work on any skin tone any eye color the formulation is incredible as well and i wear this duo a lot in autumn and also sort of around the christmas period as well because i also find this color is very festive and having an eyeshadow duo as well enables you to wear some eyeshadow but not have to try and pair loads of different eyeshadows together you you compare these two together and that is it you have a really lovely beautiful eyeshadow look done so it's it's quite good if you want to have some color on your eyelids but if you're not that good of make at makeup or if you're not that good of at you know pairing lots of different colors together you can just use this duo or any eyeshadow duo really and your eyeshadow look is done number 12 is eyeshadow sticks and eyeshadow sticks are great if you want a real basic eye look. If you're very much into having a bit of colour on your eyes but nothing more, eyeshadow sticks are the product for you. If you're not very good at working with powder as well, all you need to do is just draw the stick over your eyelid, get a fluffy brush and blend it out and you're done. It's so super quick, so easy. So if you're in a rush, eyeshadow sticks are a great option or if you're like me and you're really lazy with makeup and you don't like to wear loads of colour loads of different colours on your eyes you're more of like a one shade and done type of person eyeshadow sticks are just excellent number 11 is eyeshadow palettes now i really like shopping for eyeshadow palettes i like looking at all of the different ones that are out i like looking at youtube or tiktok reviews of eyeshadow palettes and now depending on the size of the eyeshadow palette sometimes it can be a little bit intimidating to open up a big eyeshadow palette and try to think what colors go with each other but the purpose of an eyeshadow palette is that all of the colors do follow a similar sort of like color story or color theme so you know that if you pair some of them together they should theoretically work so some of the guesswork has been taken out of the equation there, but yes, it does require possibly a little bit of playing around and figuring out the best shades that work together. And I know that I've said I'm not really a big eyeshadow wearer. I'm very, very kind of like basic with the eyes, possibly not today. I will sometimes just run a little bit of like a brown eyeshadow through the crease or I'll just take a nude and ivory shade and just run it all over the lid. So although I'm not using loads of eyeshadows, in one go I will wear maybe one or two and then I might wear another one as an eyeliner as well so I do wear my eyeshadow palettes quite a lot even though I might only be wearing one two or three shades within a palette at any one time number 10 is eyebrows and my kind of ideal makeup look is very much that you know clean makeup look that you tend to sort of see on TikTok. It's very much about en enhancing your natural features, not wearing loads of color, just keeping things very simple, very natural, very neutral. And eyebrows that play a big part in that. And maybe not today, because I do actually need to get these waxed. My eyebrows naturally are pretty good. They're pretty pigmented. They're a nice shape, they're quite full. So I quite like to just run a little bit of clear brow gel through my eyebrows and then a little bit of a pencil. And I just find that doing that just frames the eyes, it frames the face nicely as well. And I think if you're really pushed for time, just put in maybe a little bit of concealer on, something through your brows and a little bit of a lip product makes you look a lot more put together. Emphasising your eyebrows is really important. Now it doesn't mean applying loads of products to your eyebrows, but just a little bit just really helps bring everything else together. So that's why it's coming at number 10 because it's an area of makeup that I really enjoy using as well and I do like shopping for, for new and different eyebrow makeup. And it is one of my favourite makeup categories within my collection. 
Number nine is bronzer. Now, I think if I was to have done this list a few years ago, bronzer would have been right near the bottom. I was very much a blusher person over a bronzer person, and I still am. I still prefer a blusher over bronzer if I was gonna pick between the two. But I wear bronzer a lot more regularly now compared to how often I used to wear it years ago. I very rarely used to wear bronzer. But bronzer is just great for giving a bit of life and a bit of colour into your skin. So how I was just saying, you know, applying a little bit of eyebrow gel just brings, you know, your whole makeup together. Applying a little bit of bronzer kind of does the same thing. It just gives a little bit of life and a little bit of colour to the skin as well. Makes you look really kind of like healthy, like you might have got you know, a couple of days in the sun. And I think as well the bronzer products that I have within my collection have helped with this as well. So my Vive Bronzer Duo, I think it's brilliant. That's what I have on today. I've also got the Fenty Bronzing Powder, which is brilliant as well, and the Cream one. So I like playing about with kind of different textures and different brands of bronzers as well. It's really a nice category of makeup to play about with and to try new products from. Getting there. Number eight on my list is colour corrector and this is a new one so kind of with what I was saying about bronzer if I was to have done this list probably even a couple of months ago I think colour corrector would have been right down at the bottom of the list and the colour corrector is a product that I've recently really gotten back into loving. I have very bad dark circles and applying just a little bit of light bisque colour corrector from Bobbi Brown just kind of pushed into my under eye area just really helps neutralise the purpley blueness of my dark circles and just makes me look more awake. Especially on today, on days like today, when I go for more cool tone makeup, which doesn't suit me as well as warm tone makeup does, and also purple as well. That tends to emphasise my dark circles. So I find that colour corrector is just a great product just to kind of make me look a bit more awake, a lot less tired, and just it makes the rest of my makeup look better as well and regardless of the makeup look that I'm going for every single time now without fail when I do my makeup the first thing I apply is my colour corrector I just find that it makes such a difference to how the rest of my makeup looks and I think now it will always be an item within my collection that I'll have I'll always have some form of colour corrector number seven is mascara and I think mascara as well is also another great item to shop around for there are so many mascaras out there and the great thing with mascara in a way is that after three to six months you really should ideally be getting a new mascara so that's quite nice to to try new ones as well because it's not an item that you're going to take a couple of years to kind of get through you can switch it up on a regular basis so you can go for a brown one instead of a black one you can go for curling or volumizing or lengthening so it's a really nice category of makeup to try lots of different variations of and mascara is also a makeup item that i wear every single time that i wear makeup regardless of whether i'm going for something a bit more colorful or whether i'm going for something real minimal i think just having a little bit of pigment on your eyelashes makes such a difference to how the rest of your makeup is going to look it just makes things look a little bit more put together a little bit more finished and finalized okay number six we're nearly at the top five Number six is lip gloss and I actually think this is another category of makeup that if I was to have done this a couple months previously it wouldn't have been so high on my collection but I have really grown to love lip gloss. I used to hate lip gloss. I used to think that it was really adolescent, really like a juvenile type of makeup item. It was one of those makeup items for me that was one of the first makeup products that you tried when you got into makeup so I think I just associate it with being like really young it for me it's it wasn't really ever a mature or refined makeup item that say like a lipstick would be and lip glosses always used to be really sparkly and glittery and just really thick and then all your hair would stick to it and it would just be a real faff so I never really used to enjoy wearing lip gloss However, the product that changed all of that was the Fenty Gloss Bomb. That was beautiful, loved that. I then tried the Vive Lip Dew, which I really enjoyed as well, but wouldn't repurchase it because it's too glittery for my liking. But the lip glosses that I own now are the Kiko 
3D Hydro Gloss, I think they're called. They are incredible. And I really like the different ways that you can wear them. You can wear them straight on their own, over a lip liner, over a lipstick, and they're just so versatile as well. So I can wear them on makeup free days, but also with a look like today or an even more smoky look or a real minimal look as well. So I just find that I reach for lip glosses way more frequently now than I ever used to. I really, really enjoy wearing lip glosses. Okay, top five now. So number five is lip liner. And lip liners, I find, just really help to just define the lips a lot more. I put this lipstick on, well actually this is a couple of lipsticks, smudged it in with my finger and something was missing and I thought, I need a lip liner. Put it on and it just refined it a little bit more. Now it's not hugely defined, It's not you can't see like a real crisp line with my lips here, but it just helps to create a little bit of an edge. It gives a bit more structure to your makeup look as well. And I like shopping for lip liners as well. I've got quite a few makeup items on my wish list and a few of them are lip liners so lip liners again are a real fun makeup item for me to sort of shop around for but number four is concealer and again i just really love shopping for concealers I, I love trying new ones again there's a couple on my list as well i want to try the lancome one i want to try the dior one kosas concealers are one of my favorite base items to shop for. I really like trying new ones and because of my dark circles as well I like to kind of find ones that can kind of tackle my dark circles and hide them and again concealers are a makeup item that I wear pretty much every time that I wear makeup because I have such bad dark circles that need concealing and then if I've got any little blemishes or something I'll apply a concealer there. So concealer for me is an item that I really enjoy shopping for and searching for new ones but I also wear it a lot as well. So top three. Third is blusher and blushes. Again, I just love shopping around for new blushes. I think there are so many beautiful blushes out there that I wanna try. They're so pretty as well. So flat lays of blusher pictures on Instagram just always capture my attention. I just think they're so beautiful. They're a really pretty product to have in your collection as well and I have always enjoyed wearing a blusher. So years ago when there used to be that whole, are you a blusher person or bronzer person? I remember around about sort of like 2017, it seemed that nobody on YouTube wore blusher and then people started to realize the difference wearing blusher made. It just gives a nice little flush to your cheeks. It makes you look really awake. It makes you look youthful and happy and sort of like energized. So the power of a blush cannot be undermined it really does again pull everything in with the rest of your makeup and I like as well with blushes that we also now have a lot more options for cream varieties of blushes and liquid as well but then there are still lots of powder options so it's nice to go sort of blusher shopping for lots of different shades but also for lots of different formulations as well and for me I feel like I would be fine with having a lot of blushes within my collection because I really enjoy blusher as a category but I also wear it a lot as well I wear it every time I wear makeup okay top two coming in at number two is foundation now as you've just seen concealer blusher and foundation are my top three base makeup items that I enjoy wearing and enjoy shopping but foundation I think tops all of them because I just love trying new base makeup I think if you can get your base makeup right everything else on top just looks better I think if your eyes look beautiful your lips look beautiful but your base makeup is patchy it's not quite the right shade or the right for formulation or finish then something doesn't look quite right about the rest of your makeup so getting your base sorted I really do think is the key to a great entire makeup look and there are so many foundations out there. There are so many different types of foundations to try. There's always new ones coming out as well. So recently we've had some new Charlotte Tilbury ones and NARS ones. Tinted moisturizers are a real thing at the moment as well. And I think with foundations, it's nice to have lots of different types of formulations in your collection as well. And I just find shopping for a foundation 
really fun. It's something that I've always really liked trying new products of. And once I have finished off a couple of foundations within my collection, I do want to try a couple of new ones as well. And I really am a foundation person. I'm not a big fan of using concealer as foundation. I'm not really sure whether it's my skin type because I am a little bit dehydrated. I don't find that it really works for me. So I have always been a fan of foundation and I think I, I always will be. So coming in at number one for my favorite makeup category within my collection, no surprise to me, this was a real dead easy number one and it is lipstick. I have always been a fan of lipsticks, always. I'm the type of person who always needs something on their lips. If it's not makeup, I'll have a lip balm on. I think the only time I don't have something on my lips is when I've woken up in the morning and I've not had a wash. But as soon as I've washed my face, a lipstick or a lip balm goes straight back onto my lips. So I will always have a lip product with me. And I remember years ago, and I think this is probably where it stemmed from, my mum had a little lipstick case that's kind of like folded over onto itself and had a little popper. So as you folded it open, your lipstick would sit inside and you'd have a little mirror. So you could use the mirror to apply your lipstick. And I think it just, seeing a woman apply or anybody apply their lipstick when they're out and about with a little mirror, there's something about it that just looks really refined and classy and, and sophisticated. I just. I just really like seeing it and I've been known as well in you know different social circles in, in, in my past as being the lipstick lover as being somebody who always had a lipstick on them always was wearing it would constantly like reapply it as well and what I also love about lipsticks is again just like the vast variety of shades that you can shop for you are inundated with the amount of shades that you can purchase so it's really fun to try and find all of your best shades for yourself and again all of the different formulations as well so if you like a real matte pigmented lipstick you've got options there if you want something a bit more sheer you have options there as well and again I just I just find lipsticks shopping for lipsticks really really fun i can't explain it any better than that i just really enjoy lipstick shopping so those were my rankings of all the different makeup categories within my collection so please go and check out emily's video and see what hers are as well also if you want to let me know what yours are so what maybe your least favorite one is or your most favorite one please drop me a comment down below but thank you so much for watching guys hope you liked it and i'll see you again soon for my next one